Now, if you haven't seen the Alien movies, I'm not gonna lie, you you should probably check them out. They're actually really, they're actually really fucking good, bro. But I'm kind of biased because I really like Alien. Like, I think the concept of aliens or, or dinosaurs, I'm just already at, automatically in. Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and the trailer for Alien Romulus might be my favorite film trailer thus far in 2024. You have not lied, bro. The trailer was amazing. I mean, that shit was fire, bro. Perfectly edited teaser offering us only the horror vibes and tones. Oh my God. Hardly... You... Oh my God. That was, I did not need to see that again. Anything of the plot. But do we need spoilers right now? No. Alien 1979 and Aliens 1986 are two of my favorite films of all time. I did in-depth analyses of both of these on the Deep Dive channel. And Alien oh, Romulus wow. as a film set between the events of both of these films coming August 16th, oh. our first Alien franchise film in seven years since Alien Covenant in 2017. This film has quickly leapt up as one of my most anticipated films of the year. So please indulge me. As it even looks like it was shot like, like, like older i don't know how to explain it i break down every little detail of this trailer explain why it's so great break down the intricacies of the alien universe holy shit i forgot there's so many alien movies this timeline and just generally cover anything you might have missed from this here we go <laughs> this is gonna be I, I, I mean i hope so So the trailer opens with this shuttle passing the rings of a planet toward a larger space station or craft of some kind. Its octagonal hatch has on the door the W with the inserted triangles of a Wayland yutani logo. Wayland yutani of course, the evil corporation in the Alien franchise that just sends everybody to their deaths. You can oh, see some text printed shit. on the side of the shuttle that's in shadow, so it's a bit out of focus, harder to make out, but beneath the two lines of that text is another Wayland yutani logo. And then on the red orangish portion of the shuttle's base, is the number 98, but I think the code might be 798 because when the backside of the ship passes us, you can see that the number begins with the seven. So director Fetty Alvarez confirmed that the Alien Romulus film takes place between the events of the first Alien, which is set in the year 2122 AD, and the second film, Aliens, which is set 57 years later in 2179 AD. That's kind of good because I really only remember the first two. In those intervening decades, while Ellen Ripley and her cat Jones- And mainly only the first one in cryosleep on the Nostromo oh, wait, on, state on, on. which is set 57 years later in 2179 AD. In those intervening decades, while Ellen Ripley and her cat Jonesy were in cryosleep on the Nostromo escape shuttle, the Wayland yutani Corporation continued to terraform and colonize the moon named Acheron, later named LV-426, which contained the wreckage of the crashed derelict ship explored by the Nostromo crew, where in the first Alien film directed by Ridley Scott, Kane was infected by a facehugger and led to the calamities of that film. But then in Aliens, directed by James Cameron, 57 years after that, Ripley is discovered and then prosecuted by the Wayland Yutani Corporation for destroying the Nostromo ship and all of its goods. And they don't believe her story, but they actually do, those pieces of shit. But Ripley ends up going back to LV-426 with Colonial Marines after Burke had sent some colonists I gotta watch Hadley's this again. Hope out to the derelict to gather samples, and the Hadley's Hope colony shortly after that went to shit. Now in the extended director's cut of Aliens, James Cameron included a sequence showing the Hadley's Hope colony before the infection with colonists terraforming LV-426 with massive atmosphere generators and families living there. In the Alien oh, movie hell timeline, no. the main events of Prometheus are set long before this in around 2093 to 2094, and the main events of Alien Covenant happened 10 years after that in 2104. So with Alien Romulus, we're back to like a generation after that in the decades after the Nostromo incident in 2122, but before when we see Hadley's Hope. There's a game? Oh wait, isn't it that game where they said that, uh... The alien is like super smart and shit in 2179. Basically, this story is what Wayland yutani did to these poor people while Ripley was sleeping. And since it involves facehuggers and xenomorphs, it means that Burke knew what he was risking when he sent out Newt's family to the derelict. That guy's such a piece of shit. Yeah. So the director Alvarez Isolation. told The Hollywood Reporter that when he watched the alien's director's cut scenes of the kids playing on Hadley's Hope, he thought, quote, wow, what would it be like for those kids to grow up in a colony that still needs another 50 years to terraform? There's no sunlight and there's no real life except to just take the place of a parent and do the 
the same job they did. So when I saw those kids, I remember thinking, if I ever tell a story in that world, I would definitely be interested in those kids when they reach their early 20s oh. and what they want to do and where they want to go. And when it comes to having them encounter the creature, the dynamics are completely different. So this movie's title is Alien Romulus. Wait, and in Roman really mythology, good. Romulus was the legendary founder of Rome, brother to Remus. Both these twins born to the Roman god of war, Mars, and then raised by wolves along the hills overlooking the Tiber River. And then according to legend, the brothers disputed on the site of the city they would build. Remus seen six vultures on Aventine Hill, and Romulus seen a flight of 12 over Palantine Hill. And then Romulus, or one of his followers, killed Remus and had it his way. If Remus won the fight, it would have been called Reem. So the word Romulus might be connected to Wayland yutanis operation to build this new civilization, building better worlds by terraforming LV-426 and giving it a breathable atmosphere. This massive structure that the shuttle's flying toward might be like a phase one terraformer or an atmosphere generator. And they've codenamed it Romulus and maybe there's a second one on another moon codenamed Remus. Its structure mm. does remind me of the oil refinery platform that the Nostromo towed in the first movie. Thematically, really the name Romulus is just a reference to the fact that no new industrial advancement in the human race can be made without the spilling of blood. This structure is orbiting a planet with rings, you'll notice. While LV-426 does not have rings itself, it does orbit the gas giant named Kalpamos, which does have rings. And so we might here be seeing the rings of Kalpamos in this opening shot. And a reminder that this is a binary star system. So in the first quarter on the all this space shit, station, man. on the main level, the passing light through these shutters could be coming from two stars. And that might be why they need shutters, because they are outside the atmospheres with little shielding, with the potential of being blinded by two different suns. And it's interesting that we start on this sanitized white walled level and then shift suddenly to the lower engineering corridor that's dirtier and looks more like the Nostromo. And the camera dollies back and we hear the iconic screech of the sirens from the first Alien film. This oh, was a predominant shit. sound effect used in the classic film teaser, one of the best film teasers of all time. <laughs> Ridley Scott actually brought the sound effect back for the trailer for Prometheus. And the production design of this movie just feels like we're back on the Nostromo, doesn't it? Alvarez says that he got to walk around on a physical, practical Wayland yutani designed ship interior from Ron Cobb's designs from the first film. Alvarez says that he tried not to use green screens and really just tried to use miniatures and practical sets. Oh my God, could. this movie is going to be amazing. This classic, cramped, claustrophobic feel where these lower levels wouldn't have windows. Why would they have windows? And it just feels like a haunted house. Now, if you played the 2014 game Alien Isolation, you play as Amanda Ripley, Ripley's daughter, 15 years after oh. the event. You play as her daughter? And the vibe of this trailer may remind you of that game because this film is set in roughly the same time period. These colonists are the- What? first generation Wayland yutani crew persons who just didn't know what they were getting into. Now, at first we don't see any of the characters. We just- Oh shit, I might have to play this before it comes out. See the aftermath. We are too late to help anybody. We hear a female voice gasping, help, someone help me, please. A male voice shouts, no, no, I don't know what it is. A female voice begs, get it away from me. And then the male voice shouts, open the door. And then over shots of an open cryopod completely soaked in blood. We hear the sound of a xenomorph and a scream. Hey, Easter's gonna be here soon, and if you want the eggs you're hiding to be full of treats. Nigga, what? Bro, you can't do some shit like that and then talk about jelly beans, man. What the hell? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. There's no way you can like factor like there. There's no way you can smoothly interject this ad. <laughs> There's no way you can smoothly interject this ad, bro. That well, let's take a closer look at this crime scene. There are two sleeping pods that have been extended open. The one furthest to the left is closed still, but the open one on the right is just drenched in blood. But the don't one on the left is say. clean on the inside, but some bloody marks on the outside. Like there was an attack in one, and then someone who is bloodied up from that attack is just trying to get help from the person in the next pod over. But all this might just be set up for the visual. I actually think what we are hearing from the actors is coming from a completely different scene, and this shot right here might have just been composed for the team. In his Hollywood Reporter interview, Alvarez confirmed that the voice we are hearing is that of Isabella Merced's character. She's playing someone named Kay. And Isabella Merced said that she watched what happens in this particular scene on an iPad during reshoots and that it was so disgusting that the people watching over her shoulder had to turn away in horror. Yeah. Alvarez said that we will be seeing something in this moment that has never happened in any alien movie or in the history of movies in science fiction. Something that he says rivals the chestburster scene of the 1979 film. That, by the way, is- No, that shit was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. So how 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 the fuck is you gonna top that? It sounds like a lot of talk to you know promote the movie. Obviously, you want people to see this movie, but uh, how can anything? Chat. What is the scene called? Actually, chat. I gotta I gotta I gotta horrify y'all, man. What is this scene called? Uh, and because I, I don't I forgot what even movie this was from. I just remember I seen this ch ch chest. 
burner scene. Chest burner scene. I seen this shit when I, I haven't seen this shit since I was younger, bro. <laughs> it made me scared. It made me scared of the movie. Yeah. It made me scared of the movie. Oh shit. Okay, hold on. Hold on, bro. I haven't seen this since I haven't. I literally. Okay, 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 okay. Come on, you're grown up now. Yeah. For those of you who haven't seen this scene, this is not like an exaggeration. It's a lot that's about to happen. <laughs> it's a lot that's about to happen. So, like, if you think you just got like, oh, it's a move, like, just okay, okay, hold on. I gotta re. I'm rewatching this one. And this one's not bullshit. Y'all know I always be like, y'all gonna watch something. No, I don't. I gotta watch this. Or at least before the, the other movie comes out. I'm, I know I'm a marathon. I'm gonna just watch the first two movies, though. Then I'm tasting better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you pound down the stuff like this. Uh -huh. I'd rather be eating something else, but uh, right now I'm thinking food. Yo! <laughs> you just know, you know what it's made of. Nigga said, I'd rather be eating something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then looked at her. <laughs> to be fair, is she the only girl up there? <laughs> oh shit. What's the matter? The food ain't that bad, baby. Eat your patrol. Chat, ain't this how the film open up? Like, ain't this the start, like, at the beginning of the movie? It's not? I was 20, 45 minutes in. Oh shit, okay. Yo, look at like the body shake. Okay, oh shit. Like, look at his hands shaking and shit. Like he's dead, but the nerves are still like being fucked with. Oh, no. don't, touch, oh. don't touch it! Don't touch it! <laughs> oh man, I can't. I, I'm. All right, I'm done. Yep. Is a high bar, my friend. Alvarez says that his test would be to look at the face of the boom mic operator when they were filming this moment because boom mic operators are one of the few crew members who don't really see the script ahead of time. So, Jesus, Alvarez, who the f are you referring Alien to? Alien Isolation is 10 out of 10, but it's the most creepiest game I ever played. Great. They had a pretty disturbing Great. Slack conversation with some New Rockstars team members, including Gina Berg and Drew, about this. And while the history of deaths in the Alien and technically connected Yo, Predator don't I, if you're interested, I have a Steam key for the Alien Isolation Collection, which includes the expansions. Uh, I got it in a bundle and am really never going to use it. Maybe I can whisper it to you in chat if you want. Expansion? I just want to... God, bro, I, I don't want to... That's a scary game. It's a scary game. Uh, yeah, man, you could... Uh, I mean, sure, man. Send it over, bro. Send it over, bro. Universe and in the history of all sci fi and horror deaths in film history, that covers a lot of ground, folks. But there is one possibility. I'm gonna start it around the time where the movie comes out for what this could be. And if you parse through their words, you can kind of figure it out. Because remember, these are early colonists who do not know what xenomorphs or face huggers are Ooh. or what they do to people. I like that. I like that concept. So with major ignorance to their anatomy and their function, keep that in mind. And for Alvarez to mention the boom mic person and for Merced to be watching back the completed shot on a- 
Wait, Mars. My iPad during reshoots before the movie was fully wrapped means that there would be no VFX work on this shot. It would have to be an effect that could be done practically on the day where it would have required sound from the actors there on set reacting to whatever this practical stunt was. The way John Hurt's death in the 1979 Alien was practical with a prosthetic torso and a table with a- Yeah, he bodied that, I ain't gonna lie. This dude was choking on his spit and everything. A hole cut out of it and blood bursting out of little cannons on the actors and a little puppet chest burster and they set up cameras and microphones to capture Veronica Cartwright's authentic reactions. Alvarez also said in the interview that he got the original effects team from Stan Winston studio who worked on the 1986 film who were in their 20s then but now would be in their 50s or 60s really. So we're talking about some gross out oh, practical shit. effects that we've never seen in a movie before. So we've seen chest explosions right. and implosions from Alien in The Thing. We saw Pedro Pascal's head implode in Game of Thrones. We saw heads explode in The Boys. We've seen limb dismemberment. That's what I'm saying. We've seen some crazy shit. We've seen a lot of crazy shit, man. So, like, what's the worst thing? What can you possibly do to make an audience go, like, like, you can make them go, ugh, damn, like, but something that sticks with them after leaving the theater where they're like, oh, my God, I still can't get that scene out of my head. In plenty of films, aliens showed Bishop getting ripped in half. Uh, We've seen faces, chest, shoulders, and... Yo! We seen... Oh, my gosh. I, I remember this. I remember this one. Hold on. I remember this one. We seen this. Hold on. This shit was crazy, chat. <laughs> this shit was crazy, bruh. I was a kid watching this shit and I was like, yo. Oh, 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 oh. They dead ass animated this shit and made the sound effects and all that shit. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like trying to think how much crazier can you get? I ain't gonna lie. I think I just probably jump off the cliff. It's like you jump, you jump off a cliff or get eaten by two dinosaurs. No, I haven't reacted to the uh, Shadow War gameplay. I just don't react to like the trailers of the game before I play it. Look at this. Oh my God. Why did, why is this the most replayed, you fucking freaks? Well, to be fair, I came here for the same reason. <laughs> Look how they tossed the nigga up and then like. God damn, bro. I heard every bone in the spot. Oh, this part, this part was fire. All right. Oh my gosh, bro. I actually like Jurassic Park too. There's, there's actually some like really good, uh, actually some really good scenes in there. Arms eroded by corrosive substances like Tom Cruise and. This is more brutal. Bro, I'm not gonna be able to post this shit. The fuck is this? What is this? I mean, if y'all reacting like that, then I gotta see it. Is that it? Is that it? Is that it? Is 
it's just a movie twitch twitch is this is literally just a movie and it's for educational purposes this man just said that it would be the craziest thing the goriest the graphic the most disturbing thing ever put, put on film he said that i'm doing research watch it off screen It's not real though. It's not real though. It's practical effects. It's not it's not real. It's not real though. Like does it a titty, her titties don't pop out, do they? Yo, he's not going to R word her, is he? Is he going to R word her? No. Okay. Bad. It's bad. bad yeah, you gotta watch it off screen. It gets so much worse. Yeah, it's not real, but it's mad TOS. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh my god, he's cutting her forehead. He's cut it. He cut her forehead. He, he's pulling over. Stop! Fuck! This thing is Jim Carrey or something. He's cutting her back. He's cutting up her back. Her back. And there's blood. Damn, he's stabbing. God damn. He's stabbing her back. There's blood spilling. He's spilling her back up. He's breaking her arm. He's breaking her arm. He's breaking her arm. Oh my god. What the fuck? Okay, yeah. That's not gonna fucking help nothing, bro. It's just a movie. It was just a movie. It's practical effects. Yeah. <laughs> they don't fucking. I don't. I'm not that's black disgusting. People! You're welcome, lol. Yeah, that person needs to be studied. Uh, this shit's. It's. This shit's still like three minutes left. Yeah. All right. I gotta for the research, bro. Cause I gotta compare. I wanna compare this reaction to what like. They're talking about. I'm pretty sure they just said that to hype up, hype up the movie, but. Don't I just watch the D1 crash out? <sighs> he turned her around. I'm pretty sure he's gonna cut her off. Her, he's, he's getting her fingers. He's getting it. Oh, what the fuck? He just he took her hands like this and then ripped the whole thing down all the way. Like he took these parts and ripped it all the way down like that. Now he's just, he's, he's doing off screen slashes. He don't, they don't want to show the slashes for artwork or whatever, fucking theatrical shit. But they'll show him splitting her fucking hands, her whole arm like this. How the fuck are you still alive? She's crawling with one arm, no scalp, hand. Split open. She's getting her phone. That's an iPhone. When did this come out? She's crawling. He's back. He's got gasoline. Oh my God. He's going to set her on fire. Oh my God. Is that baking powder? It's bleach. And, it, and now it's powder. He's, he's dousing her with powder. He's screaming and oh my god. He put it on the he put it on the exposed wound on her back. He's, he's rubbing it in! He ripped her face off! Johnny, you're still afraid. Stop it now. I'm wait, this nigga! Wait, what did he do? The guy paused the video and like fast forwarded it. Fast fast forwarded it. You've been handing out candy? It's that some bowl is still filled to the brim. It's some lady. I think. Allie. 
Oh, it's their mom. I'm assuming. Oh shit. Um, I think Allie? he. Uh, I think he's coming back. Allie, she, me. She's going up the stairs looking for her daughter. Her 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 boobs are back around. I don't think she's. I don't think she's wearing a bra. Oh my god, he's he's picking at her thighs. He's picking at her thighs. He's he's slicing at her thighs. He's peeling the skin off of her thighs. He's doing a Jim Carrey laugh looking at her. Oh my god. He's shrugging. He's doing a Kanye shrug. Now she's moving. He's pointing like this, and she's uh, he, she's his puppet or something. She's rightly screaming. He, he he went like this, and now he's doing these he's doing these slapper motions. I think it's over. Wait, the guy's minimizing it. He stopped it. Okay, it's over. Um. Okay, I think that might have been the I think that might have been the, actually the, the the nastiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That's that's the that's the most disturbing. Like I can't stop I can't stop holding my, like soothing my hand because it's almost like I could feel that shit, bro. It's almost like I could feel that shit. Oh my gosh, that was the the most disgusting thing. I thought it was worse. When, I thought it was because I seen a movie where somebody stabbed their hand and they pulled their hand out. It's worse than that shit, bro. Oh my gosh. Edge of tomorrow, we've seen human centipedes for crying out loud. And alien Romulus isn't gonna be NC-17, so there wouldn't be anything like downstairs. Ah! So we deduced from all of this that we are going to see something like a face hugger latch onto Isabella Merced's face for the tube of that face hugger to plunge down her throat. And for these other colonists, not knowing what this thing is, will instinctively just try to yank it off but this face hugger will latch onto whatever it can inside of her and her oral cavity and her head and throat will be turned inside out and the skull will implode. Ooh. This is a bloody practical effect that would only be accomplishable with a prop version of Isabella Merced's chest and her head and her throat that could be swapped in for an insert shot. I actually think we see part of this scene later in the trailer very briefly. There is a shot of a yeah. face hugger's oral tentacle yeah, beginning yeah. to slide out of a mouth, which is something that I don't think we'd ever get to, right? It would just lay its genetic material inside of you and then it would just fall off when they weren't looking. So someone is trying to pull this off of someone and I think it's the first part of what this all-time gross out moment will be. Okay, let's move on to the rest of the trailer. This is such a fire shot. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, these are some good shots, bro. Okay, we see more of the cast I love here. the camera it whip. stars Kaylee Spiani as Rain Carradine. Kaylee's having a pretty big year as Priscilla Presley from Priscilla, and she's going to be in Alex Garland's Civil War film next oh, month. David okay. Johnson as Andy, Isabella Merced as Kay. And then oh my God. I remember now. Garland's Civil War film next she month. She played David Dora, Johnson right? Andy, Isabella Merced as she, she She played Dora in that Dora movie, right? Is that, who, is that what I'm thinking of? Okay, okay, bet. I was like, when I first seen her face, I was like, why she look familiar? Okay, and then there's Archie Renault, Spike Fern, and Aileen Wu as other crew persons. We see face huggers bursting through a hatch, but I think the even creepier detail of the shot are the various face hugger legs that are wriggling through the yeah, crack of the door. Uh, yeah. About a half dozen like of them spiders, bro. It's through like, and ugh. one leaps on this crew person in the foreground who, if you look closely is wearing a flamethrower pack. We see some yellow warning lights flashing through this dark graded corridor, reminding us of the Nostromo self-destruction sequence from the first film. And then Rain and Spike Fern's character run down this curved hall, tossing flares. And then we follow Aileen Wu's shaved head as she marches through the ship, seemingly unafraid. The yellow Badass. lights flash past Badass. Andy, who wears a jumpsuit with a Wayland yutani You know he dying There's first. something about the way Let's he's be real. standing and how we heard his voice saying, hollowly, run. Could Andy be an android? He has the same posture as Ian Holm as Ash. And depending on how close we are Wait, between what? the first film and the second film, Andy, the android, might have had the same faulty programming that Ash had. Because remember in Aliens, Bishop talked about the past models. Was it an older model? Yeah, the Hyperdyne system is 128.2. Well, that explains it. And the A2s always were a bit twitchy. That could never happen now with our behavioral inhibitors.
And yes, by the way, James Cameron did write the word hyperdyne as a nod to the AI robotics company. I gotta Cyberdyne rewatch this movie. I didn't know nothing about no. there's this shot no, of characters uh... floating in zero gravity, wearing suits similar in design to the ones worn by the Nostromo crew in the 1979 film. So I think the entire space station is just going to collapse and fall apart because at 44 seconds, we see the structure bay exploding as the shuttle departs it. But then there's this very quick shot of, I think that's rain, dragging across the deck someone else who's incapacitated. And over this hatch, I think are my favorite details of this trailer, these two symbols are what's called semiotic standard. It's a series of in-universe symbols used in space travel developed by designer Ron Cobb for the first Alien film because he just kind of concluded while he was doing world building for this world that, you know, they would develop their own kind of like color guard for how to communicate with each other, especially if many of these group persons are speaking different languages. And this semiotic standard has shown up mm. in sci-fi production design everywhere in sci-fi and films after this because all these production Yo, designers the love what Ron Cobb did in Alien. So you can see it in the background of the Sam Rockwell film Moon. You can see it even in season two of Marvel's Loki outside the Loom Observation Deck X-Men themed shutter doors. Oh. So these particular symbols actually have a translation. This nigga gonna find a way to bring up some that goddamn Just Marvel. Some 90s promo peak. He gonna find out the way to bring up some Marvel, man. Imagine that. Uh, what? Okay, hold on. The one on the left translates to hazard slash warning. And then on the right, that stands for bridge. It's just so cool to see Ron Cobb's design reflected. But yeah. then again, it wouldn't feel like a proper alien film without these. So Alien Wu's character turns back just in time for a face hugger to grab her face. Look at There's that camera character whip. character behind her, like limping toward her. While in the background by the door, someone is writhing on the floor. Maybe that's Isabella Merced's character. But it looks like Andy is trying to operate the door control panel. And notice that the face huggers do not go for him. It's just another clue that Andy might be a robot. Okay, on to the final. Final part. Oh, so they don't go after robots. Okay, we end this trailer with a shot of rain that is totally meant to evoke Ripley and Aliens when she mm. takes the elevator down to the lower levels to rescue Newt from the alien queen. Rain carries this pulse rifle. It's similar to the M41A pulse rifles that we saw in Aliens, at least with the light up display showing how many rounds are left, but it is not exactly the M41A. It's like a variant of it. I don't know, maybe it's like an M41B or like an M40 or an M39 or something like that. But Rain looks up suddenly and we cut to a close up of a xenomorph jaws with the silver teeth and its inner puncturing mouth shooting out. It's exactly what Ripley and even Parker have gotten sad close-ups of. But obviously this is taken from a completely different shot. It's just like a fun jump scare to end the trailer with. Now according to Fede Alvarez, both Ridley Scott and James Cameron have seen a cut of this movie and they both loved it, but they had like very different notes. I don't know, maybe Alvarez just really wants to sell us that this movie originally planned to be a Hulu release is something with the stamp of approval from two of the best working Hulu release. All time. But you know what? I didn't even need to hear that. Based on this trailer and that there are semiotic standard in it, I'm in. I'm sold. I can't wait to see this movie. Comment down below with your thoughts on this trailer. Follow me at EA Boss. Subscribe to all three channels in the Neurox Stars Network. Yeah, that I, I, I seen some shit I ain't need to see, man. Uh, I, I honestly believe now after seeing that scene that the like, I'm sitting, I'm sitting here in the, like my office, right? I don't see me in theaters being more like disturbed than I am now, bro. <laughs> like my, I, I still feel my hand being ripped apart from the two fingers. It's like disgusting what I just saw, fucking saw, bro. That's actually disgusting, bro. Oh my God. And, and, and meanwhile, this nigga is like literally like full ma the mass like, <laughs> it's like, what the hell is this? All right. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. That movie's got it. <laughs> that movie has got it, bro. Oh my God, bro. What the? Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I am disturbed. Bro, you ever seen this shit? If it's something else disturbing, I don't want to see it, okay? Oh, yeah. Midsummer. yeah. I seen this. I seen this movie in theaters. That was weird. Um, That movie was just weird as fuck to me. It was, like, weird. And I'll never forget when they jumped off, when the dude jumped off the, uh, yeah, he jumped off the thing and like, bro, it's like the way he landed was so like, it was such an awkward angle that he landed. And it's just like, <laughs> like a huge, cra huh, shit's just disgusting. Like I hate things like things that rip in a weird way or things that break in an awkward angle. Like it's like, why the, it's so disgusting, bro. You got to see this. Can we just not, I'm not watching this. No. I'm good. Um, all right. Okay. Let's, uh,
let's let's move on let's 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 just move on um